Hi folks and welcome back to Fishing with Den. Well this one's going to be different. This one's going to be fishing with a, a waggler but we're going to be using the thing called the lift method. And all the lift method means is that you have your float sitting to about there in the water and when you get a bite it literally rises up like that. Now this method was originally designed for tench uh, way back when. When I was a kid back in the 60s um, it was mentioned for tench then but since then it's actually become really useful for other things and particularly shy biting spe species like the uh, crucians, uh, bream, f1s, that kind of thing. Still great for tench as well, but I've kind of modified it a little bit um, to what they used to do, because it used to be just a, a slim waggler with a fairly large weight right down at the hook. You probably aren't going to be able to see this too well, but there's the hook and there's the, the weight there. And that's probably seven to 10 centimeters from the hook. And that's all there is between the hook and the float. The float has all the bulk around it as usual, but the idea is that fish comes along, picks up the bait, that lifts up that shot there, like so, and as it does so, that's what gives you that fantastic bite. Now, I tend to use it these days in mixed fisheries where I'm gonna catch carp, or I might catch something like crucians, goldfish, or bream, or something like that. And it might be that you have to <laughs> see tiny bites. Now, we all know when we fish for crucians that you tend to have the float just dotted down to that because they'll come along and they'll just pick the bait up and they'll just sit there. And so you need the tiniest little dimple showing. Now, for those of us um, who, like me, used to have um, not such great eyesight anymore, I've obviously had mine fixed since then, but having something like this method where this fairly thick tip comes right out of the water, that really pays dividends. So what I'm going to show you today then is how to use this method, how good it is and how versatile it is. And just to give you an example of what the bites look like, just take a look at this. This is the one where it rises up in the water and it's so obvious you just hit it straight away. Couldn't really miss it, could you? Um, the second bite is where it just goes under. Here we go. And again, that's just like a normal bite. So you do get the best of both worlds. So let's have a bit more of an in-depth look at the rig. Here's the float. It's a homemade 3AAA waggler. Um, there's no loading in the base or anything. And I've just made this tip, which pulls out so I can change the tips to different colors to suit different light conditions. Just push it back in and that's it done. Held on with the usual um, adapter. And then I've got a bulk shot uh, underneath it. Now, in this case, I've used a, um, a line stop. It happens to be a Guru one, but whichever one you want to use is fine. That just means that I can put all the bulk just down below the float itself. And what I do is I actually have the bulk, so it sits the float to about sort of there. And then if we go down the line, just got tangled up there with me. When we get to the bottom, we've got a number four shot, this happens to be a Stotts, and a hook. And that's actually something like, oh, seven, eight centimeters away from the hook. As I said at the start, the bait gets lifted up, so does the uh, shot, and then that just lifts up. And of course, if the fish just takes the bait like that, the float just shoots under, as I just showed you. It's really, really simple. A little bit of messing about to set up, but I'll show you that now. So what I've done, I've just put the float in down at the edge in front of me down here, just by the rod. Um, obviously it's, it's pretty shallow down there, so the, the bottom shot near the hook isn't registering on the float. And of course, that means that, as I explained to you, the float is sitting with the antenna sticking right up. Now, I actually will uh, do a video in the next few weeks to show you how I make these floats. They're very simple, but as you can see, or as you're hopefully about to see, they're pretty effective. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the, the hook with the shot next to it. I'm just gonna hang it on the ring of the swivel there, like that. So I've got nothing down the line, but I'll show you again exactly what it looks like now when it sits in the water properly. So there you are. You can see it sits so that the yellow part is just sticking out and there's a fraction of the black. And that's all I need. Now this is a modification on the original uh, way of doing things. And some people still uh, do it slightly different to me, but I, I find this way works for me. So I'm just gonna stay with this. Um, 
what other people do is they'll have the float so that this bottom shot is actually heavy enough to sink the float. And they cast out, and because it gets deeper as you go out, when they pull it back in, when they can see the top of the float, they know the shot's lying on the bottom, and that's it. But then, of course, you've got the shot on the bottom, you've got the float up here, and it's a straight line. <coughs> Excuse me. So you've got the straight line to the float. Um, I think that's less versatile than this, because what I do is I plumb the depth so that I've actually got the uh, shot just on the bottom in the usual way. And then, as I've done here, the actual depth is probably about from here to here. But what I've done is I've moved the float up by 30 or 40 centimetres. What that does, it means that the, the hook and the shot are on the bottom, and then I'll draw it in. And I'll show you that in a second when I cast in so you can uh, see it explained more pictorially. Um, the float goes in, it sits so the antenna's sticking up at the top, the shot goes down, sits on the bottom, and then because I'm over depth, I'll just wind in a little bit on the reel, and you'll see the float sink down to the point just there like that, as I explained before. Then I've got a more diagonal line from the hook and shot to the float, and what that means is um, it's not sticking straight up where fish are actually going to be putting their mouths around the bait, um, I just feel it gives me uh, less false indications. It may just be a personal thing, but I like to do it that way. But more importantly, if you do get a bit of a, a chop on the water from the wind and a bit of tow, that diagonal angle seems to help the float to hold up. Anyway, let's uh, cast out and I'll show you exactly how I uh, trim the float down. I might as well put some bait on while I'm at it. I'm just going to use one piece of sweet corn on a size 14 hook and let's get out there and do some fishing oh, caught in the grass okay i'm going to go out i don't know probably 10 meters or so to cast and i'm going to sink the line instead of just flicking it under like i normally do i'm going to one two three with the rod tip underwater that brings it back to where exactly where i want it and you can see that the float is sitting right up like i explained then i'm just going to turn the reel handle just slightly and you can see the float just disappearing down now until it sits. So we've created that angle as I was explaining. Now all we've got to do is wait for a bite. It's really actually quite simple, isn't it? Well, that's quick. <laughs> that was a perfect lift bite. Literally, I'd been in for a few minutes. Well, at least something's gone right so far, hasn't it? <laughs> and that just goes to show you exactly what I was talking about in the introduction, guys. Not a big fish at all. But you can see the uh, amount of lift on the float. It's, uh, it's virtually impossible to miss bites like this. Probably about a pound or so. And he's managed to swallow it. Mm. There you go. Good one. Okay, well, that's not bad. First fish in a few minutes. Let's get back out there and uh, see if we can catch some more. Whoa! <laughs> that was a bit explosive, wasn't it? <laughs> Obviously a bit of a bigger fish this time. I've got the clutch set uh, reasonably loose. I could uh, tighten it down a little bit, I suppose, but it's fine for the moment. He literally went from the bottom to the top in the space of a split second, didn't he?
like I say, with the carp, you're probably just going to get the straightforward going under bites, but it really does give you the benefit of uh, all worlds to, to try and use this method from time to time, especially if you're only pleasure fishing. In a match, you'd probably do it differently. You'd probably end up using a pole or something, but if you want to do it on a waggler rod, possibly because that's the only rod you've got, well, this is something definitely worth trying. And after this, I'm going to have a cup of tea. And I'm not putting any bait on because every time I have a cup of tea and put bait on a hook, it goes under, so we're not doing that today. Right, come on fish, I think you're about ready. What was that last burst at the end of the... Yeah, a bit bigger. Put that out there. This one's a thicker fish, and it's uh, slightly pregnant. And my glasses are falling down. <laughs> right, let's get back in there. No, no, we'll do the cup of tea first, eh? And that was the going under type of bite, which you get from carp. Obviously I've had carp all the time so far, but uh, it just goes to show that this is a really versatile method that will show you both uh, going under type bites and also those fantastic lift bites. So you get the benefit of both worlds where you can um, catch plenty of carp, as I hopefully am going to do today. But also if you're fishing in a mixed venue where you've got crucians or bream, uh, that kind of thing, F1s, uh, really, you're just going to be able to see the bite so much better. This one's probably a couple of pounds or so. Oops. There we go. Just getting a little bit of ripple on the water now and uh, there's a slight toe obviously there's, there's not much but uh, as I said before the, the way this float is set up it does tend to take account of a little bit of a, a under toe on the water so you shouldn't have to change to uh, a different kind of rig. Mm, something happening little dibs and bobs and stuff put my cup down it was obviously a fish just being uh, around the line and just knocking into it a little bit. But if it's around the upright line, then it's not that far from the hook. Of course, that's not to say it's going to take my bait, is it? <laughs> Another little bob and a nice lift. Yeah, as you can see. You really can't miss bites like those lifts, can you? And this will be a carp as well, so just goes to show you can get the lift bites off carp just as easily as you can off crucians and stuff. Just tighten this clutch down just a fraction. Where are you, fish? Should be under me by now. Yeah, it's always good to have a cup of tea in it because you're guaranteed to get a bite then. This is always a dangerous part when you're right down by the net. You really don't want to be trying to force them at this point. It's not a match where we'll scoop them out and so on. Just take your time. There we are. Get this unhooked and get back to me tea. Again, not huge, probably two and a half pounds or so, I suppose. Nice thick fish, but pristine condition look. Absolutely beautiful. Well, they're coming nice and steadily now. Happy with that. The only thing is the winds change direction, which is 
not so good. First of all, it was going that way. Now it's going that way. Still, it's not a strong wind, so we should be fine. Something happening. Just bobs and dips. And, yeah, there we go. So although it didn't get a big lift bite as such this time, just hang on, let's let this one do its thing first of all. It started to just do this sort of thing. And once you get a bit more experience of it, you'll sort of get to realise what is a bite and what probably isn't a bite. But of course it went straight under afterwards anyway, so that was fine. Of course, when I wanted to catch shy biting fish today, what do I do? I catch dirty great carp. Well, they're not dirty great carp, but they're not quite what I was aiming for for this video. Still, hopefully you're getting the idea that we can use this as a very good method to catch both shy biting and definitely non-shy biting fish. Of course, if you were just fishing for crucians or sometimes just bream on their own, nothing else, you'd be quids in with this method. Oh, and for those people that live in other countries other than the UK, quids refer to pounds, British pounds. Pound is a quid, and quids in therefore means you're well in. I have to say this uh, homemade float's doing very well. I might just make myself a few spares of these because at some point I'm guaranteed to lose one by throwing it along to a margin swim and hanging it up on some reeds or something. But that's all part of the game. Right, come on fish, time to come in. And yeah, there we go, we're in. Again, decent sized fish. Net's cold on my legs, what a wuss. Here we go, look, nice little fish. GoPro, stop recording. <laughs> GoPro, stop recording. And the beauty of this method is that if you stop catching in your sort of further out swim, you can actually catch in the margins. Now these margins here are probably about a foot shallower than the, the main swim, but I'm just gonna try down there. If this works, I'll point the camcorder down there so you can see what I'm doing. But just first of all, I'm just gonna give it a go, see if there's any fish down there. Works in exactly the same way. You've just gotta turn your reel a little bit to trim the tip. Got a little bit more um, angle on the, uh, the line, the main line from the uh, shot to the um, float now, but it works exactly the same. It's, it's a great little standby, you're only pleasure fishing. What I do when I'm pleasure fishing is I'll uh, feed obviously out in the main swim, but to the left and right if I've got two swims, sometimes you don't have a swim either side, but there's nobody around me today, so um, I just feed a little bit to the left and right, and at some point during the day, usually afternoon time, the fish will turn up in the margins and I can really sort of bag up then. And I don't even have to change the rig. Whoa! <laughs> okay, hang on. Well, there's another one for the outtakes, guys. Do you know I should just know better? I, um, as you probably saw, I was setting up the camera to look sideways down to the margin swim, and uh, I'd put the float down so I could see what I was doing. I couldn't find the float. And then, obviously, the reason for that was because the fish had taken it and uh, the reel was going backwards. But anyway, should we keep that for the outtakes or should we just give you a laugh on this one? <laughs> I don't know. Not even a big fish and you saw how the reel was going backwards, so that's why I always say, leave the anti-reverse off, guys. <laughs> 
Okay, well look, I've uh, now done the right thing. I've spent a minute or two um, by casting out there with no bait on, like I should have done in the first place. Talk about stupid sometimes. But anyway, I'll change the camera around down here. And with a bit of luck, I'll be able to show you how you can get a few bites just down in the edge there, using exactly the same rig at exactly the same depth. Obviously, as I've said before, shot and floated down, sorry, shot and um, baited down here, floats up here, so there's quite a big angle on it, but that's okay, because I've got the thing under control and under pressure from the rod rest here, and it works perfectly, as you just saw. <laughs> Well, he's off, isn't he? <laughs> These fish from down the edge are usually bigger. Anytime soon, fish, you can stop now. He's way out there. In fact, he's way over there. <laughs> I said I got this clutch set uh, loose, but it ain't that loose, guys. Got plenty of bend in the rod, as you can see, and there's no clutch moving now so as I said it's it's not that loose it's over here now look <laughs> in fact he's over there I don't know where are you fish all right I think he's uh somewhere in the next seven or eight meters out oh there you go oh, hang on Where's he going? Got some pull in him, hasn't he? He's seeing me and he doesn't want to come anywhere near me now, look. Yeah, right. Let's see if we can avoid the camera with the landing net. Now we've adjusted it for down to the left. Uh, don't plod down there, fish. Come on. Let's see if we can get in the first go. Um, yes. Well, I'm definitely the biggest fish of the day. Not huge, but he's well, six or seven pounds or so. Nice thick chunky fish that one. Let's see if we can get another. So strictly this isn't exactly what I came here to show you for but hey it's such a versatile method I thought uh, we'll just show you uh, another thing you can do with it like I said. So I'm just casting down the line of the, the bank, sink the line as you reel in and then draw it to where you need it to be out there in the rod dress as before and then just tighten down in exactly the same way using the reel and it's exactly the same thing you tend to get more gazunder bites here than, than drift bites but hey a bite's a bite's a bite so i'm happy with that getting a liner there i think i never hit it yeah it was on oh it's gone underneath the weeds oh only a small fish, in fact only a tiny fish, smallest one of the day, we can lift this one, which is unusual for me to do but there we go. No wonder it was a dithery little bite, small but perfectly formed as they say. So I'm going to have to pack up then guys but hopefully I've shown you how effective uh, this lift method can be. As I said right at the outset, it's really, for me, the sort of thing you'd use when you want to catch crucians or bream or F1 when you've got to dot the tip right down to hardly anything because this one, when you get the lift, as you've seen, will just rise up. The versatility comes into the fact that you can also use it in the usual way where it just goes straight under. So if you're catching that mixed bag, like I mentioned at the start, you've got the options for 
seeing the bike really well on both of those. And the final benefit, of course, as you've just seen, is for me to uh, throw it in down the edge exactly the same depth as it was uh, out there. Even though the depth of the water down here is probably a foot shallower, I didn't actually need to uh, adjust the depth. I could have always gone back out there and fished out there if I'd wanted to. But by just drawing it in, in the way I've shown you, that means that the float is just going to sit just to the yellow there and you're going to be in full control. You still might get a lift bite, you're probably more likely down the edge to get uh, a gazunder bite as I call them. But hey, hopefully as I say, it's shown you yet another uh, method for your armoury. So that's it then on the lift method. As I said, some point in the future I'll show you how to make one of these antenna floats. So if you want to have a go at it, you can do it. Having said that, if you've got some thin insert floats, you can use those as well. It doesn't have to be this, I just happen to make it this way because it really does show up the bites in a really pronounced fashion. So, time for tea then, or dinner as they say, we're in different places in the world, and uh, that's where I'm heading now. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. If you want to subscribe, you can do that too. And until the next time, bye for now.